Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker, and here we are discussing uh, how to survive as a, a minor nation in Victoria 3. So the first thing that I want to tell you about how to survive as a minor nation in Victoria 3 is that you need to be extremely familiar with both the territory that you currently have as well as your diplomatic situation, um, because these are going to be almost as important for you as a tiny country, if not more important for you as a, a tiny country, vis-a-vis -vis the major powers. The reason behind that, of course, is that as a major power um, or a great power, it's going to be pretty easy for you to find some amount of iron and coal and wood inside of your territory, but that's not guaranteed with these tiny countries. Um, sometimes you're lucky and you start with all of them, but sometimes you don't. Um, and so understanding the resources that are available inside your state, uh, so it's like, see, Ausa, for instance, Ausa does not have any uh, coal, and they have like one logging camp, right? Um, and so the resources that you have inside of your market initially are going to help you determine the sorts of things that are available to you. Um, but that's kind of not really the most important things when it comes to being a tiny, a tiny country. The things that's most important when it comes to being a tiny country are your pops and the market of whatever country you can convince to uh, to take you under your wing. Um, so in this case, I would recommend that virtually anyone who's trying to play as a, an incredibly small and weak country, you probably need to restart until you can find someone who is going to have a protective attitude towards you, because being a part of somebody else's market is an enormous upgrade in terms of your ability to grow. Um, it's going to do two things for you, of course, is that our market is going to become stapled to theirs, which means our, our demand and our supply is going to become stapled to theirs, and therefore our ability to have access to the resources that we need in order to grow is going to become stapled to theirs, right? So we just joined the, the Dutch market, which means that now all of a sudden um, the prices are just like completely different, and not just the prices, but also the size of the markets, right? Now, because we've joined the Dutch market, it's going to be easy for us to build a construction sector or two or three, depending on the size of our budget here as SEAC. Um, Cause no longer is our wood, you know, like whatever, like a hundred or whatever it was before where by building one construction sector, the cost would explode. Now wood costs 16. Like we can build a, a wood based construction sector wherever we happen to have enough peasants. Um, and so you, by joining another market, you do allow yourself access to the resources inside that market. It's not free. You do eventually need to break free from that market, um, and you need to be careful about how you maneuver yourselves inside of it. But, like, oh, our, our GDP just went up, like, probably just went up, like, 90K as a result of joining the Dutch market because all of our stuff can sell for much better prices now. Um, but... That's, that's the beginning of the solution for these tiny nations. Can you survive without joining somebody else's market? Yes, you can. Um, but I think generally speaking, it's actually going to be less efficient simply because it's going to be very easy for you to grow um, by, by parasitizing um, somebody else. They, it's also going to be really helpful, by the way, in case you parasitize somebody who has access to guns and artillery, because um, you're going to have easy access to guns of, and artillery yourself, which is going to make it easy for you to go on the warpath and conquer the, the other undeveloped nations around you. Um, but in addition to being aware of the specifics of the resources and populations available to you as a small state, you are going to have to take a lot of steps probably to make sure that pops are going to move to your territory because you're going to need them. Um, as a small nation, one of the things that's going to restrict you, of course, are your number of pops, but that's not the end of the things that are going to restrict you because you're not going to have enough arable land. Um, that This is what one thing that people keep popping up over and over again is playing as like Krakow or whatever. Krakow does not have an infinite amount of arable land and therefore has a, a population carrying capacity. Um, it just, it, it can't, you can't put 7 billion people here in Krakow. There's just not enough space. Um, and so that's why as a small nation, you do need to expand and conquer territory um, to pick up arable 
whole land, but then you also are going to need to liberalize your, your laws at least a little bit to encourage people to move to your territory, because one of the things you're going to parasitize off of uh, your overlord is, of course, going to be the market. But the other thing you're going to hope to to steal from them are pops, um, and because you're going to be part of a larger market, you can specialize, and you can build a lot of things that are just going to be really profitable. Um, just find whatever is, is going to make you the most money inside of the market that you're currently in, build that stuff, that'll increase your standard of living by a lot, and as your standard of living increases, people will try to move to your country, but if you have closed borders and debt slavery and stuff, they aren't going to do it. Um, so be aware that part of what you need to do as a small nation, in addition to finding a, a, a friend to protect you, is dramatically change your laws um and if it's a if it's a nation like like the netherlands um don't be afraid of fighting civil wars like you can't you can't do it if you're a literal one province miner but if you're siak and you have two split states you can you can trigger civil wars with your landowners and expect um the dutch to help you most of the time which is going to make it really easy for you to get some of these laws changed and therefore a lot easier for you to get to a point where the dutch are going to want to move to you um but you know like i said that you're going to need to you're going to need to do a lot of liberalization in order to to accomplish that that's not the the only path to getting pops in in arable land of course you can and should conquer um which is why if you're if you're underneath another country you do want to take that time to to dramatically change your weapons up i would encourage most people if you're able to find a, a european overlord in the beginning of the game just like beeline down in napoleonic warfare because if you beeline down in a down to napoleonic warfare even if you only have like or two five stacks and a, a five stack of navy you can defeat most of the enemies around you um if you have line infantry and mobile artillery because it's just so much better than than irregulars it's not even funny right if you're fighting irregulars with uh infantry they you, then you're fighting 10 15s if you have line infantry that's a that's 20 30 plus another 15 15 so you would have 35 45s versus 10 15s if you just had um line infantry and mobile artillery yeah and and they're not even gonna be that expensive because you're gonna have uh access to all the weapons from from the homeland so you know like use use the market that you join in to um pump iron in your in your mom's basement for like 10 years while beating the crap out of everybody and then once you've done that uh and you've secured yourself enough land and prestige and power to 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 rank up uh then go ahead and declare independence that that's once once you're at that point that's when you need to start appreciating what resources you've developed internally um, so depending on how quickly you can expand inside of your local market it may make sense for you to um to build up a lot of different kinds of industries just so that way when you leave it doesn't cause your economy to explode the larger you are inside of your overlords market like if you're the east india company and you're you're part of the british market then it's going to be harder for you to mess up that that independence movement just because like if you're an in industrialized india it's you you are the british market so when you leave that's their problem not yours but if you're like siak and you've only conquered um a little bit of of malaysia it it may be complicated for you to leave the dutch market so just you'll have to do a little bit of of triage and make sure that you have um enough bureaucracy and enough convoys available to fix any problems that might emerge um, as a result of, of you leaving. On the note of convoys, do not neglect convoys if you are part of, of a, another empire. As it stands for Aceh, or for Siak in particular, you're fine because you're you're on a land border with the Dutch East Indies, who in turn has a, a connection back to the Netherlands. Like if you don't have a port or a land connection though, joining another market isn't gonna help you because you're not gonna have market access. Um, and so you need to make sure that you you do do your due diligence and develop some market access for yourself as well. Uh, beyond like your local expansion, which is gonna be more profitable for you, of course, because local expansion is gonna allow you to gain pops that are gonna be the same heritage type as you, and therefore are gonna be a lot easier to tolerate while you're still working up uh, multiculturalism. You also want to prioritize finding the areas that are just gonna be particularly weak, no matter where you are on the map. So like if you're Siak, don't be afraid to like 
think about imperializing in in Somalia. Um, most of those guys are not going to be able to fight you. If you can get a large enough navy together, you can invade Madagascar or Zulu. Um, it just it it is it is situational depending on how how far you've grown. But by by finding your way into another market, uh, it's going to be pretty easy for you to utilize the resources there to outgrow your local competition, and that's really all you need to do. You don't have to declare war if you can join them via customs union, but that's going to require you to have an obligation there um, or to have really, really good uh, relationship with them. It's not worth it. Um, you, you, that, that delay or or rng role you can do it with rng if you if you want to be really fancy but it's going to be tough and it's also going to require you to have an extra interest in an, an, another location most of the time it's I, I think a lot less reliable than just finding your way to becoming a protectorate of someone all right um that's walker and that's uh how to how to survive as a, a one province miner or as a, a minor nation here in victoria 3 i i didn't want to go through like absolutely every build order and construction but you do i i, I didn't mention this but the five points that you start with these are free because you're not buy you don't have any construction sectors right they aren't buying any goods and so you start with free construction always be building stuff even if your economy is not yet big enough to support a construction sector which some of them are not i want to make sure people understand that some some economies like ausa this economy starts so small with such a tiny number of pops um that you you really cannot afford to pretend like you can run a construction sector until you've solved a little bit of your money right because it the remember that your uh your debt is based off of the cash reserves of the of the buildings in your economy so in this case 25k and um 25k all right so you have 50k of debt to work with that's not enough to do anything with that's that's not enough to do anything with and you know it's not enough to do anything with and so you need to you need to grow your economy to the point where you can actually even use a construction sector sometimes um but this one this one's always free uh yeah that's uh that's walker all right take care